right up at the director's box with the main man, Tony Abbott. Tony, how are you, mate? I'm really good, mate. Yeah, really good. Enjoying the game. Obviously, it's Halifax Salford today, but we're here talking about a much more important game yeah, in, yeah, sure. in the grand scheme of things. Um, that's the Danny Jones. Yeah! Oh, <laughs> Bounce to a ball, man. Bounce to a ball. Yeah. That's what it's about, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, we're here talking about uh, the Danny Jones uh, game yeah. on Sunday, 11th of October. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got some great players lined up oh, yeah. for both the rest of the world team. The rugby league community have come out in support. Uh, loads of ex-players, some current players as well, and a Danny Jones 13 as well. Lads who played for Halifax with Danny. Um, and every single penny goes to Lizzie and the Twins raised on the day. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's touched everyone's heart what's happened with Danny. Um, you know, and I think even more and more so now with Lizzie and what she's done last weekend at the Challenge Cup. You know, have, having the pleasure of getting to know Lizzie behind the scenes and and hearing and hearing what she, how she's coping and everything. It's just been overwhelming. Um, so putting this game together. For, for her and the twins is, is something that I'm really passionate about and you know and I, I'll, I'll say it a million and one times but you know thanks for all the players that are, that are getting involved thanks for um, Steve Fisher for the, the screen you know there's just so many people all joining joining up and getting involved which is great it's £10 for adults £5 just £5 for concessions and juniors and hopefully there will be also be a game on before the rest of the world versus Danny Jones game, a full contact game yep. with uh, Ovendon versus uh, Halifax Select yeah. team as well, amateurs. Yeah, yeah, we, we were trying to pull this off. We're just waiting for the um, the clearance uh, with the stadium, but I, I, I shouldn't think that'd be a problem. So yeah, that, that'd be that'd be that'd be quite tasty. So you're going to see a full blooded contact game early doors with Ovendon and Halifax Select, and then straight after that, the star-studded Danny Jones 13 versus the rest of the world 13. Like I said, Lee Breers, Rory Paul, all pulling on a shirt, remembering Danny Jones. It's a credit to everyone, you know. I think Lizzie just said in the room uh, about hum how humbling uh, rugby league is as a sport, and I don't think she's hitting the nail on the head. You know, you can go any other sport that's got a ball in, and you don't get what's happened. Um, today or since um, the tragic news of Danny. October the 11th is a Sunday, the day after the grand final, Danny Jones game right here at the Shea Stadium um, and we're all going to be supporting the family, raising money for Lizzie and the, and the Twins. Yeah, there's just no reason why no one can't come. There's no other game on that day, so let's, let's, let's get down here, let's get down here. Fantastic. Cheers. We've got him here, Leroy Rivet. We rescued him from the shores of Flamborough Head. We, uh, we thought you'd gone missing. You didn't come with a Landstone trophy. It's our fault, really. We, we, uh, we forgot you had a bit of a miscommunication. But joking aside, we had to ask you about Tom Briscoe's five tries. We did a few interviews, didn't we, in the build-up to the final. You mentioned that you sometimes watch to see if anybody's going to score more than four. And he, he got the five. How, how did it make you feel? Obviously, Jimmy, you know, um, with, with any success, with, with, with any rook or when it goes, it's, it's always so disappointing. It's always emotional. Uh, as you're aware, you know, you, you've alluded to the, the joke at Family Head that I've already jumped off the, the, the piers there. I, I was away camping with my daughter, you know, for the Challenge Cup weekend, so there's no better person to console me than obviously being be, be with a be, be little girl. Uh, ironically, I watched the game with her and uh, I saw Tom score his fourth try and, and she was absolutely bursting for, for the toilet. She must have known it was coming, she must have known five were coming and she couldn't hold on to it, so off went to the toilet. We came back and she's kind of you know kind of a uh Reserve my my, uh, my my shock and shame. So I've actually, actually not seen his, his, his fifth try. But yeah, it was certainly emotional. But uh, rugby league teaches you so many things. It teaches you how to overcome adversity. You know, you, you win matches, you lose matches. Records come and go. Your career finishes, and you know, you learn to cope. You learn that life does go on. But I'm really happy for Tom now. You know, it's it's, it's his moment. I've, I've had my I've had my moment. You know, I'm really pleased with him. And you know, well done, Tom. Mate, you've got your issue, nobody can ever take that away from you. One of the things that always surprises us about you with the history is you seem to never get older. When we see you, you just get younger, you've got oils coming out of your face and that, you must begin to get looking young. How do you do it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it is, Jamie, I don't know. It's a, a fresh shave uh, works wonders. You might want to give it a try yourself and it, you'll, you'll, you'll see it might knock her uh, 10 years off you. I suppose the way to keep young, you know, the, the little girl, you know, she's my absolute heartbeat. She, she keeps on my toes. You know, I work in schools now, so I've got to keep, got to keep on my toes. I'm, I, I, that's, that's obviously the key to her. Uh, Keep looking young, eat well, train hard, keep out of trouble.
Mate, I eat fairly well. I train quite hard. I keep the beard on to take it away from what you might see under my face, mate. You don't want to see it. I keep my beard on. Uh, we've got a game coming up, real special one. Alex Simmons is putting a big superstar, really, all-star team together. You're part of it as well. Are you looking forward to that after the grand final, the game for Danny Jones? Very much so. This is why rugby league is, you know, it's, it's the biggest game on, on the planet. It's not just the game itself, but it's how the community really pulls itself together. And there's, there's a lot of staff to be players playing in that game. He's, I've, I've noticed he's got a lot of, uh, he's recruited a lot of backs, a lot of half backs, and, and a lot of backs. He, he needs a few forwards. Perhaps you might, you know, you, you might be able to uh, kick the brace off and play yourself. And Alex, the size of him, you know, could do a couple of forwards. So perhaps he could uh, line up in that team as well. But thoroughly really looking forward to it. You know, looking forward to the charity event and you know raising some funds for for a great cause. If Shimo can sort me a segue out, I reckon I could referee it. A bit of referee definitely on one leg um, lastly I just wanted to ask you about players when they finish playing I know at least one player who's going to play in that team who struggled a little bit with life after rugby league is finished not quite being able to cope with it how do you manage to put the game behind you and just focus on what life threw at you next yeah, I recognise that transition. It really is a difficult transition. I was chatting to Moz just, just uh, earlier today about what he's going to do when he finishes. I'm quite fortunate. I've, I've gone from, you know, I'm passionate about what I do. And obviously playing rugby league, I was passionate about. I've now gone into working with young people, and that's, a, that's another job that I'm passionate about. Uh, I, I suppose you, you've got to you, you've got to plan for it. If, if, if you don't plan for it, it's kind of all-consuming. There's no secret to, to how you cope. But again, as I alluded to earlier, that's what rugby league does. You know, it teaches you to overcome adversity, whether you lose games, whether records go, or, or whether it's the end of your career. I love these guys. No matter how old they get, how distant they become, they always inspire me when I see them again. Cheers, Leroy. Cheers, Thanks very much. I got a text message this morning from the legend Moz, right? And I'm really excited. Open it up and thought, what's Moz want to tell me? And I looked, and it was a spam text, on it? For, right. for some money for Kilimanjaro, as Alex Simmons likes to call it. What are you doing at the end of the year? Looking forward to it? Yeah, I really am. We're climbing Kilimanjaro for the Steve Prescott Foundation. There's a number of ex-players who, who are doing it. But we're not just climbing it, we're actually going to play a game of rugby league at the top of the mountain. It's going to break the world record for the game played at the, the highest altitude, so... Uh, we're looking forward to it. It should be a bit of fun and uh, obviously for a, for a great cause. Have you done any training? Because as fit as you can be, it's pretty tough, isn't it? The altitude stuff on gyro. Yeah, it's not how fit you are, it's um, how your body reacts to the, the altitude. So I've been doing a couple of sessions in, um, there's, a, there's an altitude chamber in Charla. A couple of sessions in that and, you know, all you can do is walk up a few hills and then hopefully uh, it doesn't affect you too bad. But we're looking forward to it, yeah, it should be, should be a good crack. Do stubborn old men, you'll, uh, you'll get on with it. I think you'll do a great job. Just wanted to ask you about Jamie Peacock retiring uh, on the front of people's tongues at the minute. Does that mean you have to carry on playing now that he's finished or what? No, no, uh, that means I can retire now. We had a little sportsman's bet, first one to retire, but um, not, not, not official with me, but I think I'm going to um, call it a day at the end of the year. But uh, I know Kevin's is not retiring officially, you know, but in rugby league he will, so. Uh, Kevin and JP, they've been absolutely fantastic players, great lads. Uh, wish them all the very best in uh, whatever they do. Rugby league players, people, personalities are really good at coming together for the sake of charities, raise money. You're going to Kilimanjaro. We're having a game for Danny Jones after the grand final. Uh, we've got a massive list of players, including Leroy Rivet. It's really good that they can come together and put this great match on it. Of course, and um, that, that's the beauty of rugby league. When, when a tragedy does happen, uh, everyone rallies together and uh, I've seen the, the, the players there Look, looks like a fantastic side and as I say a great cause and you know we'll get down there and more people can get here the more money raised which that's what it's all about Mate you're one of my heroes for my kid so when I get on to that will you send me a text of inspiration and send it just a bit of spam was that alright? I certainly will Jones eh? yeah. <laughs> Cheers Paul <laughs> I'm here with Malcolm Keelty who's uh, due an MBE for his services to wheelchair rugby that's right isn't it? So I've already got it. Sorry, I was yeah. Sorry, I was I was messing with you earlier. <laughs> Winding me up, bit of banner. Suitable for rugby. Him, he's got me. Bet me over here. Uh, so how did you get involved in wheelchair rugby? How did you founder it? It goes back a couple of years, but uh, clearly rugby league in the, in the DNA with with my, with my family as a running game. You know, um, having a disability pretty much all my life, I was involved with wheelchair sports. And round about 2005, the French came over and somebody found me and I had to sort of, I was, I was it in England to start things going over here. So that's how it started got going. So we, we sort of grew it from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we just heard the crowd cheering there. Big Halifax supporters. Your dad is a legend here, Stan. Yeah, yeah, he played for Halifax sort of 40, 1947, 58 sort of area. So that's the time, you know. Um, so clearly, 
I had to go in those days as a child, now I do because I like it, you know. But uh, yeah, growing up with a game, growing up with a club, it felt like it was a job that had to be done when Wheelchair Rugby League came into this country. Then uh, we, we, we sort of got the ball rolling and now there's, there's, it's played in about five counties and there's about 20 teams playing up and down the, the country. So we just need more people playing. Brilliant. Absolutely. Thanks for your efforts, mate. You inspire people like me and Alex, and it's a real pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. Yeah, take care. Cheers, mate.